Our guest this morning is Scotty Gibbons. Scotty has pastored uh, a, a long time, especially a uh, long time with youth. You've got me beat, man. He said 20 years in youth ministry. 18, I did 18 and a half years of youth ministry, so here we are. I thought I'd be a youth pastor forever too, but God changes things. Scotty uh, lives in Oklahoma City currently, but he lived a long time in Springfield, was at, uh, at James River Church there and had an incredible ministry. He's been with our youth this weekend, and uh, we are blessed to have him share this morning. And the youth are going to be con concluding their retreat at the 11 o'clock service. But I want you to give a warm welcome for Scotty Gibbons as he comes. Listen, I meant to say this, not to make it awkward, but if you want to bless him in any way, you can give it an offering online, newhope.church slash info or give, and you can do that, or drop giving in the, in the boxes at the back. This guy will bless you. He's got a word from the Lord this morning, and I'm excited. Thanks so much, Pastor. I appreciate that. Hey, what a treat to be here with you. And uh, I want to take a second to say uh, just how much I do value the friendship and the relationship and the opportunity for uh, just an invitation. I don't take it lightly that you would open up a Sunday morning and allow me to come in and partner with you and how God is using you and the whole team here at this church. You're a blessed church with, with pastors and leadership who love God and they love you. Can you just put your hands together right now? Let's honor our leadership. And I had way too much fun at the youth retreat with Pastor Luke and Pastor Zach and Pastor August. I mean, you, you, you can't hang out with those guys and not have fun, right? We had way too much fun. Uh, but I want you to know the, the services that we had. Like when I left last night, um, and I'd been in the service for well over two hours at that point, not because I'm a long-winded preacher. Come on, don't judge me like that. I just mean because God was moving, okay? It was a powerful time. But there were young people just when I left who were still weeping before the Lord. They were on their faces before God, lifting their hands and worshiping God. God is on the move in your student ministry. And you have youth pastors that are committed to teaching the Word of God, to prioritizing the Word of God, young people taking notes while I was preaching, engaging. Engaged with the mess. It's not like that everywhere you go. The young people were ready and receptive for the word of God. And youth pastors who are committed to creating an atmosphere where students experience the presence of God. I'm just telling you, you're a blessed church. Come on, one more time. Can you thank God for your church today? Fun, fun time. All right, I've got to show you a picture. Okay, I've got to show you a picture of my crew. Here's my crew. I'm so glad that you have big screens because I have a big family right there. That is my best friend, my bride, Casey. And then our five, 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 five daughters, Candace, Kelly, Grace, Bria, Allison, and Angel. And I love my princesses like crazy. I miss them when I'm away from them. And then you'll notice the little guy there, the caboose, Jordan. I call him the champ. And uh, he is here with me this weekend on his very first ever daddy ministry trip. This is his first time to ever get to come. He's in the kids area right now. So if you would, everyone stretch your hand towards the kids area. We're gonna pray for them right now because <laughs> Jordan is in there and I guarantee you he is taking over. In Anyway, uh, it, it's great to, to be able to introduce you to my family and, and uh, Jordan will be around afterwards. And I know he'd love to say hi. He never meets a stranger. But I have friends who will say to me from time to time, bro, five daughters? Like six kids? How are you going to pay for college? I'm like, I can't. Scholarships are just like, Google it. I don't know, man. You're going to have to figure out how to grow smarter. because it, What about the weddings? I have friends who say to me, what are you going to do when they start dating? Five daughters, what are you going to do? And, and uh, man, that's, that's overwhelming to me. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you as a dad. I'm like, oh, my goodness, but I, 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 this is really cool. I want to tell you this. This is going to bless you as much as it did me, but check this out. I prayed about this, and the rapture is going to happen before my girls get married. Come on, isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour, but we do know for certain it will be before my girls start dating. So praise the Lord for that. 
Hey, I want to talk to you today just on this thought of why I love the church. And the reason I want to talk to you about that is because just about every weekend of my life, I'm in a church, preaching at a church, speaking, traveling, speaking at a church, and, and uh, I'm a little bit of a church junkie, if you will. I mean, I've never preached on a Sunday here in my life, but I'm just telling you now, you, you may not have voted on this, but I just, I just feel like family. You know, just because I come in, I've never met you before, but I feel like we're brothers, and you're my sister. I, I, I just feel like I'm with family because there's something you unique about the church. I just love the church. And, and maybe you've lived long enough to where you remember a time to where the church was really just the hub of the community. I mean, it was, it was a place where even people who didn't attend church, they still respected and revered the church. I mean, because the church was the church and that was the holy place. And, and yet times have changed, have they not? So for many, it becomes like the joke of the sitcom or it becomes marginalized by those who uh, aren't followers of Jesus. And, and yet it doesn't stop there. There are many who even want to be hostile towards the church. And so they want to live in a world to where everything is acceptable. Everything is tolerated. We want to have an open mind except for the church and the church going. I mean, it's just like there's this hostility. And so some would say that the church is on the ropes. Some would say that the church has had its heyday. But one of the reasons why I love the church is because there's a promise attached to it. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You can't stop God's church. You can't keep God's church from moving forward. And I would say in a time where there may be a lot going against it, I would suggest to you not only is it not on the ropes, I would suggest to you that it's not time to fear for the church, but it's time to watch the church flourish. I really, really believe that. I believe that our best days are not behind us, but they're right here and right now and ahead of that. Do you believe uh, that for, for the church, like God's church is on the move and... You know, whenever, um, it's important to know that the church is God's idea, right? This is not man-made something that man pulled together and God's like, well, that's just messed up. You know, it's the best they can do. Let's just not interrupt it. You know, no, this is God's idea. As a matter of fact, when Jesus rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, uh, before he left, he told his disciples, he's like, here, get this word out, the story that you've seen, the miracles that you've experienced, this message of hope. I want you to get it out all over the world. We'll call it the Great Commission. And so then as the church starts to do that, you see this captured in the book of Acts. And, and, and we see in the book of Acts what's referred to as the birth of the church, the launching of the New Testament church. You see it in the book of Acts. As a matter of fact, when you're in Acts chapter two, you'll see that uh, Peter was up preaching and telling people like, this is what this is all about and, and giving the good news of Jesus. And it says that about 3,000 people were added to the church that day, 3,000 people. That, that's a pretty big Sunday, wouldn't you say? If you're just like, oh, it's a good day, 3,000 join. I mean, it'd be awesome, right? And so he preached 3,000 did. And then you catch up with just this narrative here in Acts chapter two, verses 42 and following. I'm going to read this passage. It's a bit of an anchor scripture for us, but today's message will be more topical in nature. But listen to this in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Are you ready for this? Say amen. Go if you mean to say, uh huh. Come on, if you mean to say, uh huh, say, oh yeah. You're like, man, have you been speaking at a youth retreat all weekend? I have. Please forgive me. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So the people of God, the, the, the body of Christ, they're, they're listening to leadership. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily, somebody say daily, Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the 
the launch of the church, the early days of the church, they were figuring it all out. All they knew was a lot of people were responding positively to the message of hope. Uh, they, they were people who were even just learning to discover what does it look like for us to get together. Like, I, I want to hear more about Jesus. And so church for them was not something to where it's just like part of life. It was something that was at the center of all of their life. The entirety of it. it was built around, let's get together, let's pray. Hey, somebody is in need, let's meet that need. Hey, can we get together and have a time of worship together tomorrow? They were meeting together, and as they just lived out the church, they saw people being saved every single day. The church continued to grow. It's a picture, I believe, of what God intends for his church to look like. And I, I, I really get excited when I think about what that means for you and me today because as they struggled through just the growing with it, as they discovered structures or systems or a way, like you see it captured in, in Scripture, they were growing and discovering and developing how to put together leadership for God's church and, and how to select individuals for leadership and, and how to deal with, with issues in the church where people needed to grow and, and, and it needed to, to, to have a greater understanding of God's word. Like they were working through all of that. So it was a beautiful mess. I mean, when you look at it, that's what you realize is like, oh, those brothers were messed up. They didn't know. You look at it and go, oh my goodness, that's what you thought. Oh, that's what you had to work through. And it reminds me of the church today. A church full of people who have issues just look around you go ahead look to the left to the right they got issues tell them right now say you got issues just tell them you got issues tell the other person on the other side you got a lot of issues you really do you need some church <laughs> let's just be honest there are a lot of churches with a lot of weird people but but we're all just broken all of us everybody's normal till you get to know them right i mean it's just like that's the way it is and it's a beautiful mess. It's not perfect. And if you ever find a perfect church, don't go. Don't mess it up. Just leave them alone. Don't mess it up. It's a beautiful mess. I just love the church. Let me for a few minutes just give you three quick reasons why I'm so passionate about the church. Why I love the church. Number one is because it is the house of God. For those of you that are taking notes, if I didn't give you points, you'd feel like you weren't at church. This is for you. Number one, house of God. Just jot it down. I love the church because this is the house of God. Now, I understand when I say that, that God is omnipresent, all present. He's everywhere all the time so you don't have to say honey i want to talk to god i'm going to run up to the church right quick and i'll be back you don't have to do that you can talk to god anywhere anytime about anything and everything god is everywhere yet there's something unique about a place that has been set apart as a gathering point for god's people to worship corporately together and to lift up hearts of praise with a one voice together and to sit under the teaching of the word of God together. It's the house of God. There's just something special about that place. I get it when the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 26 and verse eight, Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. God's everywhere all the time. But there's something about this house that when you come into it, you begin to sense the presence of God in a unique way. Some of you, even as you pulled into the parking lot today, it just feels different than when you pull into the parking lot at the mall. It's just different. Because you know you're pulling into God's house. Listen to what the psalmist writes in chapter 84. In verse 10, he says, One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship, beats thousands spent on Greek island beaches i'd rather scrub floors in the house of my god than be honored as a guest in the palace of sin i get that i get it because i feel that way i just love god's house because i know that whenever we come to god's house you're going to be encouraged by god's people 
I, I know that when we come to God's house, we're going to be able to be a part of worshiping God in a way that's unique and different when I'm just praising God on my own or talking to God as I drive my car. It's unique. And so I know that if I can get to God's house, I'm going to experience something that's unique and special and set apart by God because the church is God's idea. I think not only that I realize that, do you realize that? Just out of curiosity, wave at me if you're like, no, I'm with you, preacher. I, I got you so far. We'll see where you go. But right now, I'm still with you so far. Okay, you still with me? I believe not only that I know it, that you know it, but you know who else knows it? I believe the devil knows how special God's house is. You say, well, what do you mean? Think about it. Have you ever had such a hard time in all of your life than you do on Sunday mornings trying to get to church? Have you, like, what is it about trying to get to church to where you just know the toast is going to burn Sunday morning? It's going to burn on Sunday morning. You just know the clothes are not going to fit right on Sunday morning. It's just going to be, some of y'all are like, how did he know? I'm a pastor. I know these things, right? Like, this morning, some of you wake up, Sunday morning, spiritual warfare going on in your hair. You don't know what to do with it. It's like, what's happening? This is Sunday morning. Every, so why is that on Sunday mornings? The kids are fighting. My kids always fight. But no, 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 especially on Sunday mornings. You're, okay, it's Sunday morning. You're driving. It's not just the kids fighting. You and your spouse are mad at each other. Just, just silent treatment, just driving to church. Blood pressure rising, just climbing, climbing, trying to get you. Some of y'all been trying to, you were trying to get to the first service. You barely made it to this one. You just been fighting to get here all morning long. The kids in the back seat were arguing. Finally, you're at your boiling point. You're like, stop arguing. We're going to the house of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then you get here and you walk in. Good morning, brother. How are you? Hello, sister. <laughs> house of God. Have you ever stopped to think about like, wait a minute, this happened last Sunday. Wait a minute, this happened the Sunday before Sunday. Like, wait a minute, this happens every single Sunday. Do you ever get the feeling that the devil doesn't want you to come to the house of God? Do you ever get that sense? How passionate are you about the house of God? And some are like, come on, man, cut me some slack. I'm here, right? I'm here, and I'm glad that you're here. And I know that there are some who are watching online that, that it's literally out of your control, like you literally, you're unable to come to the house of God. Can I just commend you for staying connected to the body of Christ to the best of your ability? I commend you for staying connected online. Some of you for a season you had to be online, but now you're back in God's house because there's nothing like it. There's nothing. So I commend you. I celebrate that because some of you are like, man, I'm going to be there every single week. And you are. Others of you, I just happen to catch you on the right Sunday. I'm glad that you're here too. You got like a rotation. And this happened to be your Sunday this month that you're here. I want to know what is it about the house of God that just would cause you to say, I just got to go. I just got to get there. Like, what is it that lights your fire? Let, let me ask you this, moms or dads, let me ask you this. If I were to talk to your son or your daughter and say, hey, what's your dad passionate about? What would they say? For some of you, would be like, ah, I think my kid might say, my dad loves sports. Oh, he loves cheering on Iowa. Oh, he loves pulling for Iowa. Oh, he just, oh, he loves sports. Cool, what else is your dad like? Oh, my dad loves to hunt. Oh, he's passionate about hunting. Oh, that's cool. He really, oh, yeah, he really enjoys hunting. Well, what else is your dad passionate about? Oh, uh, my dad loves working on cars. He's really into cars. Oh, that's cool. I wonder how long we would have to talk and how far down we'd have to go down the list before your son or your daughter would ever say, my dad loves the house of God. He's just passionate about it. My mom Oh, man, she just starts, starts acting weird on Saturday night. She just kind of smirks. She's kind of smiled, a little pep in her step. And at first, we're not, we're like, oh, that's right, tomorrow's church. That's right, mom gets like this on Saturday nights. Some of you are like, are you just cutting up? Are you being silly? Kind of, but kind of not. I've purposed that I will live like that in front of my kids because I want my kids to know that this church is a gift from God to us. It's not a place to where we check our little spiritual duty and say, 
Great. Are you happy, heaven? There you go. I did it. I went to feel better about myself because I got a little dose of church. I, got, I, I did a little time. I got it in this month. Ah, I don't see it like that. I love the church because this is God's house. And when I come into God's house with God's people and listen to the word of God and, 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 and I sit under the teaching of God's word and I interact with the presence of God through worship, I know that things happen in me that would not happen. Otherwise, there's something special about the house of God. I never want my kids to, to, to think that they have to say to me, Dad, are we going to church today? I never want to hear my kids ask that question. Because if I had, I have done something in my leadership that has caused them to say it is a week to week decision. Then we're going to church tomorrow. Hold on, let me check who's playing. Who, what time's the game on? Ah, we're not going to make it. Yeah, maybe not this time. Uh, y'all watch online. Don't they do something online? Somebody got a nap or something like that. Yeah, just check it out. Hey, we'll go back next week. I, I don't want that. Dad, are we going to church tomorrow? Ah, let me check the weather forecast. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. There's, there's, a, there's, a, ch there's a chance. There's a, there's a possibility. There's a chance. They're saying it might rain. Not going to be able to make it tomorrow. Dad, are we going to church tomorrow? Ah, well, let me, oh, the yard's got to be mowed. I'd take me a good hour and a half. Okay, yeah, I'm not, not going to be able I never want that to happen. I want my kids to know one of the greatest gifts I can give them is a priority on the house of God. Why? Because this world is crazy. The devil is real. They are going to be under attack. I know. You've got to get to the house of God. Make it a priority. Are you passionate about the house of God? I get it when David said in Psalm 122, verse 1, he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. One of the reasons I love the church is because it's God's house, but there's a second reason. Number two, I love the church because this is a house of healing. It's a house of healing. Listen to what it says in Psalm 92, verses 12, 13, and 14. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted, planted, planted in the house of the Lord, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. It's a picture of being planted, a picture of being grounded, a picture of being rooted a picture of flourishing, a picture of thriving, a picture of life, vitality, of blessing, of prosperity, of favor. It's a picture, it's a connection of being planted in the house of God and experiencing the life, the healing, the health that comes from doing so. This is a house of healing. Now, when we're talking about the church or the house, again, we're not, we're not talking about the four walls of a, of, of a place as if people just walk in and they just come in and, and they just walk into the lobby area and they just kind of soak it in. Like, I don't know, I just feel healing. I just feel good. No, we understand that we are the church. Would you turn to somebody right now and say, you are the church? Go ahead, tell them, you are the church. When we talk about the church, we're talking about a people, not a building, right? But I love the church. I love the church that bases out of a place like this, but you and I are carriers of God's healing. God uses us to bring healing to people who are desperate and who need it. Listen, there are people even in this, in this service right here and right now, or in the first service, or in the one to come, they are here because they were on just hanging by a thread. I know that, just statistically. I know that there are people in this room, they didn't even attend this church, but they, they hit something in their marriage, they hit something in their job, they ran into something by way of a diagnosis from a doctor, and, and in a moment of just of brokenness, in a moment of desperation, all they knew was like, there's that church up the street, or I've heard about this church down the road, and so they get here. Can you imagine what some people are carrying when they come walking through that parking lot? Some single mom, and, and maybe she has a child or two, maybe she She's got a, a person, two or three diaper bags. Maybe she's pushing a stroller, and as she's coming in, she's trying to fight back the tears because of the stress that she's carrying. She's just looking, looking for hope. She's desperate, and as she comes pulling up, there you are, smiling, greeting, opening a door. Hey, I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome. Hey, can I carry 13 or 14 of those diaper bags for you and just help you here for a second? Here, load me up. Let me just give you. She's like, oh, thank you. Yes, and you load them. You go, hey, you're probably looking for where little Johnny needs to go. Come on, I'll walk with you. On where to, good, because she didn't know where to go. She's just desperate. She didn't know if he's going to sit in her lap the whole She didn't know. And you just come on with me, let's go. And you walk her down to the kids' area. 
You say, this is where little Johnny's, and then there's somebody uh, smiling there, and the room is clean because somebody got to church early. Make sure it looked nice, make sure it looked safe, so that visitors are going, this is a place I can trust my child. And so they, they get them checked in, and you go, come on in here. Now, he's gonna be fine, he's gonna have fun. You come in and sit with me, and you come in and you sit down, and through worship, the presence of God is moving, the word of God, and you look over, and you see tears coming down her face, and you're like, oh, revival must be happening. What you really don't know, she's going, free child care. <laughs> and she leans over and goes, and y'all got three services? She's like, she's, I'm coming to all of them. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit right here. <laughs> But God's moving in her heart. She hears a message that says it's gonna be okay. You're not on your own. You don't have to give up. There's a God who loves you and cares about you. Her heart begins to soften. She responds to Jesus. All you did was carry a diaper bag and bring healing. You get done with the service, she doesn't wanna leave. She's thinking, I gotta pick that kid up. Oh my goodness, I don't even know. But you're like, hey, let's go get him. You go down the kids area, little Johnny comes out, and uh, he's like, oh, mom, this is great, this is incredible. She's like, what? Oh, it was so much fun. Well, she doesn't know that while all that was happening in the kids' area, there was, there was some male figure, was a, a man of God who loves God, who cares deeply about God, who loves God's house, who wants to be used to bring healing, and he was serving in the kids' area, and while he was in there, he got down and he connected on little Johnny's level, and he's like, oh, man, you know what? I was hoping this morning that somebody cool would show up. I prayed and asked that God would send me a buddy, and here you are. Oh, my goodness. Little Johnny's never had anybody say your muscles look big nobody's ever said to him before those shoes sure look fast I bet you can run nobody's ever said that you don't know what's going on in little Johnny's life you don't know you don't know the kind of abuse he's experienced all you knew is you said yes I'll serve in the kids area and then you go in there and you serve, and now little Johnny's leaving. He's going, Mom, we got to come back next week. I'm that dude's only friend. <laughs> if I don't come to that poor soul, he won't know what to do. We got to come back. And she's like, You bet we're coming back. Some of you are like, Scotty, you don't want me to work in the kids' area. It would not be good. I just, some, some of you, if the pastor had said, would you go help at that youth retreat? You, you just started twitching. You just started breaking out in hives. You're like, I, 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 teen, I, uh-uh, 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 not teenagers, not teenagers. I lived through that once. I'm never going back. Some of you, that's the way you would view it. Well, man, can you be a greeter? Like, like can, can, you, can you smile? Some of you are like, how long? Just for a second, just long enough for them to see it, and then you can go straight back to being miserable. I mean, you can go right back to it. Can you smile? Can you open a door? Can you be a part of the worship team? Why do you think that you're gifted? For your glory? You think you're talented for your own pleasure, your own benefit? You can, you can be a part of set up, tear down, clean, and you can be a part of greeting, you can be a part of the graphic design team, you can be a part of the media team, you can be a part of production, you, you can play instruments. There's something that God can use you to do to bring healing to people. This is a house of healing. And some of you are like, hey, I looked into it. I would be a part of the worship team. Do you know they have to get there an hour early? I barely make it before worship is over on a Sunday, and they gotta get there an hour before? Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I heard about that, I did. Yeah, I heard about that. Really funny to me. Um, so, uh, I used to play sports. Any, any athletes in here? Come on, wave at me if you're, if you're an athlete. Wave at me, any athletes? Any former athletes? Wave at me if you're a former athlete. Anybody you ever had a dream once that you were athletic? Come on, just wave at me right now. You're like, yeah, I had a dream once like that. So I, I would play uh, football, and my mom would be screaming from the, fan, from the, uh, the stands there. And uh, despite the band playing, cheerleaders cheering, all the noise, I could always hear my mom because my mom, I, I would throw the ball. Let's say I threw, as a quarterback, I threw an interception, threw it to the wrong team. And she's screaming out, Scotty, that's the wrong team. <laughs> I just want to stop and be like, oh, 
Oh, okay, thanks, Mom. I didn't realize that. I thought that's what I was saying. Thank you very much. That's my mom right there. Thank you, Mom. And then if I was running the ball and guys were coming towards me, I could clearly hear my mom, and my mom would say, run out of bounds. I'm running the ball, and guys are coming towards me. She would scream out, just sit down. Don't let them hit you. After the game, I'd come home, maybe I have some bloody knuckles or my arm scraped up or something, and she'd say, let me, let me see that, and I'd show it to her, and she'd say, did that happen on that one play when that one boy hit you? I was like, yes, ma'am, that's when it happened. Did you not hear me tell you to sit down? No, actually, Mom, I did. I did. I clearly heard you over the entire stadium. I, ironically, I, I heard you very, very clearly. Then why didn't you do it? Because, Mom, that's not how you play the game. Like, when I show up, I expect opposition. It would be weird if we showed up for the game and we're warming up and then the other team shows up and I'm like, who are those guys? Oh, well, that's the other team. Well, what are they doing? They're gonna try and keep you from scoring. Well, that's not very nice. <laughs> it would be weird if when I was trying to run the ball and they tackle me, I'm offended and I go, that's, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt. Slam the ball down. I quit. That hurt. I'm out. And stop playing the game. It's weird. That's weird. That'd be weird. Because I expect that. That's the game. You know what's stranger to me? Is that when it comes to the church, a lot of times, we say, okay, God, I'll do it. Then the enemy tries to oppose us. And we're like, hey, that hurt. That wasn't nice. I quit. You quit? Yeah, I quit serving. Why? It was hard. You were just looking for something easy? Or you were looking for something to make it difference? Well, I did this, I did this. And no one said one word of thanks or appreciation. Nobody. I quit. Jesus, I know you carried the cross. I know they, they beat you. I know you shed your blood. But listen, I got there an hour early and cleaned the whole room. Nobody said a word. I quit. How hard does hell have to work to knock you off of your commitment to serve the house of God and bring healing to people? For some of us, it's way too easy to give up. Well, I tried to get into a Sunday school class. I tried to get into a small group, but, but when I did, I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it, so I quit. You quit? Yeah, they were just weird. It's a weird, weird group, weird, weird people, weird group, weird people. It's just weird, so I quit. You quit? You're weird. I'm weird. We're all weird. But if it's not the right fit the first time, you don't quit. You find another one. Because why? I want to be a part of this thing because I love the house of God. I see that it's a house of healing, and this is the last thing, and I'm out of time. It's a house of hope. I love the church, because this place is a house of hope. Our world is crazy, y'all. And it's only getting crazier. And as I read my Bible, I don't expect the world to straighten up or to clean up or to be, I, I'm not expecting earth to be heaven. When I read my Bible, it says it gets pretty bad just before the return of Christ. I believe with all of my heart, I really mean this, I'm not just saying that this is not just preacher talk, I'm just telling you straight from the heart, I mean this, I believe that Jesus is coming back soon. I really do. I think when you look around and you see the speed at which evil, perversion, division, hatred, demonic, I'm talking about stuff that at the core, that's not just a bad personality, that's not just political, that is demonic. You look at what's going on. If you can look at that and just think, oh well, I don't get that. I'll look at that and I go, man, something is stirring. I believe that Jesus is coming back. And this is not where I think that the church steps up to fight for people who are away from Christ to start acting like people who are in Christ. 
I think it's time for the church to say, my goal is not to win an argument, it's to win a soul. My goal is not to build walls, it's to build bridges. I wanna be the church and I wanna be viewed as a carrier of hope, which means when I go to my workplace and there's somebody with a profane mouth or there's someone who's a gossip or there's someone who's unkind, I don't look at that and take offense and go, bless my heart or I'm just so tired of that person. I look at it and say, God, I realize that you've sent me here because lost people act an awful lot like lost people. People who are hurt and broken act out on their pain. And that's an indicator to me that you've brought me to bring healing and hope. I realize that when I go to the grocery store, I'm not just going for milk and a loaf of bread, but God is sending me on assignment to somebody on aisle three who's just on their last leg. And I realize time is short. This is real. This counts. This matters. God, use me. When I go to school, when I interact with people in the neighborhood, God, use me to bring hope. The cool part of this whole message is this. The church is God's idea. The church is not shrinking back in this moment. The church is going forward in this moment. And in a time where people are desperate and hurting and hopeless and looking for answers, you and I have the answer. The answer is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And as you and I purpose and determine to love his church, to serve his church, and to be his church, you will find that God will use you to bring hope to people who desperately need it. While the time is short, the crisis is real, and we have to make the most of the moment, I believe that God has raised you up. God has raised up this church for such a time as this to be his light in this world. Can I pray for you today? If you just bow your heads and close your eyes. Before pastor comes, I just wanna pray this blessing over you. Lord, would you please help us to be who you've called us to be? Would you please empower us to do what you've called us to do? We say yes to us, to, to what you're asking of us. Take us, spend us, and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.